What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. Join us now as we look at this week's edition of Dynamite, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including WWE and AEW go head to head, WWE to make history, Eva Marie returning to WWE, Triple H talks WWE booking and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new website, WrestleMania.com. As always, we won't recap the matches, but just look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always, we start off with the good as number one AEW Continental Classic. Last night's show was built entirely on AEW's new tournament, known as the AEW Continental Classic. The tournament has a stacked field, and a winner of the tournament will be crowned at the World's End pay-per-view next month, and will receive three separate championships, becoming a triple crown champion in the process. The three championships are as follows, the Ring of Honor World Championship, the Strong Openweight Championship, and the brand new AEW Continental Championship. The first match in the tournament saw Swerve Strickland take on Jay Lethal, and the match was a passable opener, however it could have been nice to see extra emphasis on Strickland's selling following his absolute war with Adam Page at full gear. The second match saw Jay White defeat Rush, and it looks like AEW are still keen on presenting White as a top star in the company, despite him coming up short against MJF this past weekend. The final match to air on last night's broadcast saw John Moxley defeat Mark Briscoe in the main event slot on the show. The match was decent as expected, and the tournament acts as an intriguing hook to keep fans watching each week. One criticism that is likely to be directed towards AEW's booking of the tournament will relate to the predictability. All three tournament matches on the show were good from an in-ring perspective, yet their outcome was never in doubt, so it would be nice if AEW threw in a few upsets to make the tournament as exciting as possible. Number 2. Christian Cage's Promo a Christian Cage continues to be the undisputed highlight of AEW programming. Last night, Cage cut yet another entertaining, hilarious, and brutal promo. The promo saw Cage rename Luchasaurus as Killswitch, and AEW would once again heavily tease the eventual Cage vs. Adam Copeland showdown, which in all likelihood will take place in the pay-per-view in the coming months. Number 3. The Devil's Identity Revealed AEW's Devil Mystery continued last night as a mysterious figure interrupted a promo segment between world champion MJF and Adam Cole. Fans on social media are now convinced they know the identity of the devil thanks to the devil delivering a sinister laugh in his brief appearance. The consensus online is that the devil is going to be a returning Jack Perry, which will naturally lead to a rather polarizing response if that is indeed AEW's plan for the big reveal. Man, what a bummer. But that was the good, what about the bad is number one, the lack of storytelling in the women's division. A Tony Storm's recent body of work shows that character work is everything in pro wrestling, and it's hardly a surprise that Storm is one of the most over wrestlers on the entire show. The issue is that outside of Storm, there's a lack of storytelling in the women's division, and the matches on the show seem rather flat. It would be nice for the rest of the division to give a compelling storyline that fans can truly connect to, as AEW have a ton of talented women on the roster, they just need to utilize them in a more effective manner. Now, there was nothing downright ugly on the show. The tournament got off to a strong start and numerous stories were given a nudge in the right direction. AEW are now on the road to the World's End pay-per-view event set for December 30th. But that was our review of Dynamite, but what do you guys think of the show? Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's move on to the news. Now first story looks at WWE and AEW go to war again. Now our top story today takes a look at some major news relating to this Saturday. Yesterday it was announced that AEW Rampage will move from its usual Friday night slot to Saturday for one week only. The show will now air on 7pm Eastern Time directly before AEW Collision. This means that AEW will be going head to head with Survivor Series, with the Survivor Series pre-show set to start at 7pm Eastern Time, and the main show set to begin at 8pm. Our fans are already questioning if this is a smart idea, as Survivor Series isn't just a standard premium live event, it's one of the most anticipated live events in recent memory, so it's highly probable that AEW will get annihilated in the ratings come Saturday. Next up, Survivor Series will make history. Now, speaking of Survivor Series, there is incredible buzz surrounding the event and WWE are set to make history with the show. The event will take place at the Allstate Arena in Chicago and according to WrestleTix, WWE had distributed 17,200 tickets for the show. This means that the event will become the most attended WWE event in the history of the beloved arena, as the previous record was set at WrestleMania 22. There's been major hype for the event for numerous reasons. Firstly, all WWE Premium Live events have done huge business under the Triple H era, and with War Games being on the card, it's only added to the hype and anticipation. 
Additionally, there is also the CM Punk factor. Despite there being several reports that Punk won't be showing up on Saturday, fans are convinced that Punk is coming back during the show. It's worth noting that although there have already been a boost from the Punk rumors, the show was well on its way to selling out months ago before there was a single rumor of Punk returning to the company. Next up, NXT commentator defends WWE. For the most part, it was understandable why WWE announced Randy Orton's return ahead of time. It was widely reported that Orton was coming back at Survivor Series, and it was also reported that WWE wanted to avoid fans thinking Punk was going to be in the War Games matchup. But logic aside, there were still some fans who criticized WWE for announcing Orton's return in advance, as a portion of the fan base wanted Orton's return to be a genuine surprise. WWE Hall of Famer Booker T commented on these criticisms on his Hall of Fame podcast, and the current NXT commentator stated that it would have been extremely hard for WWE to keep Orton's return a complete secret. You know, a surprise would have been great, but I'm sure someone would have broken on Twitter that Randy Orton had been spotted in Chicago. I'm sure of that. There's no way around that. So these days, trying to surprise someone, you might be just shooting yourself in the foot. Everybody should know that Randy Orton is going to be there so they could tune in and buy it more than anything. More importantly, you want the Randy Orton fans to know that he's going to be there. Next up, AEW to enter into new Wednesday Night War. In 2024, AEW will embark on yet another Wednesday Night War. However, this time it won't be against WWE, it'll be against the Griffin family from Family Guy. Starting from March 6, Family Guy will move to Wednesday nights, which gives AEW Dynamite considerable competition. Whilst Family Guy isn't as popular as it was 10 years ago, maybe even 20 years ago, it still attracts around 1 million viewers on average, which is around the same amount that AEW Dynamite attracts on a weekly basis. Do you think Tony Khan can win the war against his new nemesis? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, WWE bringing back Eva Marie. Eva Marie had two separate runs in WWE, and neither of them were met with positive reviews. Although there's a lack of interest from fans seeing Marie return, she took to Twitter yesterday to state that WWE should cut some talent in order to bring her back. As the highest paid female WWE superstar, my contract could only activate after a series of talent releases in order to free up the capital to cover my contract. But am I down? Who should WWE and Fox cut in order to afford bringing me back? Whilst the tweet is clearly in character, it can be questioned why on earth Marie is teasing a return of some kind. Have WWE and Marie reached a deal and is this acting as a prelude of what's to come? Whatever the case, Marie's tweet raises alarm bells and we'll have to keep a close eye on the situation. And finally, Triple H talks his booking philosophy. Our final story today takes a look at a recent interview from Triple H who discussed a range of topics including his booking philosophy. The head of creative was interviewed by Sports Illustrated this week and the game went into detail when it comes to his philosophy for booking the WWE product and he even name dropped Vince McMahon. Vince taught me years ago, you put yourself in the seats and you'll never go wrong. You always got to maintain that perspective. I started out as a fan. Book what people want to feel and see. Writing this stuff is a feel. You can analyze stories and how they come together, but how does it make you feel? If you can make people feel those stories, they're going to be invested in the product. That's how we try to approach. Find that ultimate emotional place for the talent and the characters and the stories they're in. The multi-time WWE champion would also discuss how WWE don't take their fans for granted and the game offered some insight into how the current roster operates. We don't take our fan base for granted and the way our talent operates is different from other generations. They want to go out there and put the best possible show they can. A lot of these kids are already invested, they grew up wanting to do this and if they didn't they fell in love with it by learning from people who grew up wanting to be in this business and that's how they learned the respect for it. To me that's what makes you successful. That connection with our fan base, that's a big part of our core. What do you guys think of Triple H's comments? Let us know in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.